Hi, I'm Dave Ingerbretson. Uh, Leroy Hyatt and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying the Angler's Art. And Leroy, we always try to get a mixed bag of flies for them, so there's something for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think today we really have it. We're going to start out with a pattern that you modified from a standard Western pattern, the stimulator, and you modified it and called it the exciter. The exciter. And it yes. excites me. It really is a good looking <laughs> okay. fly. I think it's going like it. to really work. Okay. And then we're going to tie an Eastern pattern, one of Joe Humphrey's patterns, that he calls Hump's Sulfur, Sulfur nymph. nymph. And finally, we'll do a pattern that's listed as a panfish pattern. It's called a baby leech, but I just know anywhere. it's going to be a killer on trout as well. Work anywhere. So it's a pretty mixed bag. And why don't you start okay. out showing us the exciter? Okay, for the material, I'll use a standard dry fly. This happens to be an orange ADOT. You could use whatever color thread you want, uh, just match the body color. For the tail and wing material, I'll use an elk hair. Some deer may work, but sometimes deer flares too bad. We use an orange crystal flash. This is just a little bit different. The uh, standard stimulator does not have that in it. We will use an orange uh, polypropylene yarn, or poly yarn, some people will call it. And then for the hackle, I'll use a standard brown. Grizzly could also be used for that, uh, but for uh, this one, we'll go ahead and use the brown. Now I have a standard uh, dry fly hook. I'm going to go ahead and pinch the barb off on it. I think this is important because the stimulators are usually tied on the long tied shank. Tied on the long hook. shank. Now, the reason I went to this short shank, I've hooked a lot of fish on that stimulator, on that long shank. But it, that long wire dry hook, or uh, long shank dry fly hook, it has a tendency to flex more, and mm -hmm. I felt like I was losing more fish than I was getting to shore. So I went to this standard length uh, dry fly hook. This is a size 10. You could tie this uh, about any size you want to go to, just like with mm -hmm. the standard stimulator. Sure. But it's been a just good fly. In fact, this year, uh, playing with it, I started playing with it probably two or three years ago starting off just with the basic orange like with all of them mm -hmm. this year or last year i went to a black and the black just really worked well, well. and of course this can be a caddis it Anything can be a stone like fly yes. it can even be a hopper yes now what i've done i've dressed the hook shank like we always do i'll take a little bit of this elk here get the tips even this will become the tail material got one long one sticking out here i'll get him pulled off now, I don't want that very long. I want that tail to be on the short side. I'm going to go soft loop, soft loop, pull it tight. Uh, tell people why you use the soft loop first. Keeps everything right on top of the hook shank. Uh, does not let it roll around. It gets the thread dressed mm -hmm. right exactly where well, it is. Well, it doesn't let the fibers flare. It doesn't let the either. fibers flare as bad. If you crank down on those first couple wraps, oh, it just yeah. lays them all over. Now, I'm going to take just one strand of this orange crystal flash, one strand only. I'm just going to fold it over against itself, and I want, what that gives me is two strands now because I folded it. I'm going to put it on either side of that tail I just tied on. One strand on each side. Well, it'll be two strands on each side because oh. I folded it. Now you can see it there, how it, it rotates around, and there it is. Now, I'll tie in the hackle, and I like to tie the hackle if I can find it. One size may be smaller than what the actual hook would, uh, would require. Mm -hmm. It isn't really all that necessary. Any one of them would work. So you tie it about the width of the gap of the yes, hook? Yes, about the width of the gap. Yeah, because the standard one would be like one and a half. That's correct. Now I'm going to take a piece of this orange poly. And like I said, tie this any color. I've got it orange. I've got it tan. I've got it black. Uh, about any color you want to try to match with. And I'm going to rotate the vise on this one. I'm going to take one wrap of material behind that hackle. That keeps everything on top of the hook like we want it to do. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just build ourselves a neat little body here. With poly yarn, now you don't want to pull that too tight. You have to hit a happy medium with it because if you pull it too tight, it takes all the air pocket out mm -hmm. and you lose that floatability for the fly. Now I'm just going to wrap this tan hackle. You can you know you can turn the vise on that I too. I can turn the vise on it. And get very could. nice regular wraps. Uh, now you can also use grizzly hackle on this. Do the same thing. I just have used the uh, 
the brown. Well, in fact, you can make about any color combination. Any you colors want. you want. In fact, but, I've uh, tied them with different colored heads in it too. Yeah. I have found myself <clears throat> more and more using rotary tying, mm -hmm. real rotary tying, where you actually turn the vise and run that hackle run up, over. and uh, it makes nice even wraps. And now I'm going to put an underwing here of that same orange crystal flash. I've tied it down with two strands going to the back. And then I'll fold that over. Now I have four strands back there in the back. Then I'll cut it off to where it's about the same length as what the, the tail would be. I find that sometimes people overdo the crystal flies. Yes, I think so too. And, uh, you, you don't, don't want a really bright sparkly fly, but you want something that's just a little bit yeah, of... Yeah, don't kill it. Uh, if you look at real insects, they do sparkle a little bit. A little bit, but if you put too but much you put on too it, much it may frighten on it, that fish of off. That's yeah. correct. Now what I've done is I've evened the hair in the stacker. I'm going to lay this on and measure it where it's about as long as the underwing we just put on. And I'm going to trim it off, get rid of those butts. I don't need those in there. Tie this down just exactly like we always have. Soft loop, then I'm going to come back on it harder. Then tie in that poly again. I have caught fish on this fly, David, on uh, on streams where there's blue wing olives hatching, hmm. and they will still come and take this fly. Hmm. I don't know why. I have no idea why. But well, it as I been said, the basic stimulator is a good all-around western yes, it fly, is. and I th I can see the advantage of this. Hoppers. Uh, uh, that little sparkle. Stone flies. Now I'm just going to wrap just that little head. I've also taken this same fly and put a peacock head on the front of it, mm -hmm. which gives it a total different appearance. Sure. Again, and trim that off. And then here comes the hackle. And now with this one, a couple, two and a half wraps, that's all you need mm -hmm. on this at all. You don't need. And you're kind of spreading them apart a little bit a little to let bit. the head show through. Yes, I want that color to show through. Yep. It will still some on the bottom but maybe not as much as it, I mean on the body section, but not as much as it does on the head. Mm -hmm. Then here we'll just build a little head, put the whip finish on. You can see why that thread color is important to match that oh, uh, yeah. thorax area. It just really dresses the That's fly That's a nice up. looking fly. Then I'll take the head cement, get a little touch of that. Roll the vise around, do it again. Now there you can see that uh, crystal flash just shine through that hair. Oh, oh, that's great. And I think it really gives that fly a different appearance. It's been just a super fly for me. And there's the exciter. Has a elk hair tail with crystal flash on the sides. Has orange poly. Has brown hackle. And again, the orange underwing, elk hair uh, for the overwing, and the orange and brown thorax area. Now we're going to tie an eastern pattern. It was designed by Joe Humphrey. Mm -hmm. uh, he calls it Hump's uh, Sulfur Nymph. Nymph. And it, it's to represent the various sulfur flies uh, that they have in the east. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to tie it? I'll use a uh, rusty brown. This is an 8 aught tying thread. The fly will be ribbed with a fine copper wire. Now you could also use gold wire here if you like. The body will be a light tan dubbing material. The thorax will be a darker brown dubbing. Uh, the tail and wing case will be a mottled brown feather and the legs will be tied out of grouse. Um, you said this is an eastern pattern. I think it would yeah. work here also. Oh, I absolutely it would. Now uh, I'm tying this on a 2x long wet fly hook. This uh, is a size high? 12. Uh, uh, in the east they talk about the sulfurs uh, and really there are several flies that go by that generic name and they range in sizes. You could tie this nymph 12, 14, and 16. Oh, I'm sure you could. And because these sulfur flies, sulfur in quotes, mm -hmm. uh, vary in size. Mm -hmm. Now for the tail, I'm going to use a piece of this mottled brown feather. Get a couple of them pulled off here on either side. This feather looks like it's been sat on at one time or another. Dave, did you do that? Well, it probably came from the rear end of the bird, and the bird probably oh, sat well, on it. Oh, maybe that could know. be. Okay, that might well be. Oh, it flares out all right. Looks fine. Now we'll tie on a piece of this uh, copper wire for the ribbing material. 
And I've left quite a bit of this uh, butt sections of that up there, but it's going to be covered up as soon as I dub it. I'm going to pull off some thread, and I'm just going to start dubbing. And I don't want a whole lot of dubbing on here. Now, I don't use wax. I just will spin it on the thread. Now, I should say that Humps, Humphrey's original pattern called for Australian possum. Mm -hmm. And that is beautiful stuff to tie with. It's very fine textured. It spins and dubs very, very well. And if you have it, uh, Australian possum, you could use that. Or any uh, generic tan Light, dubbing would yeah. work fine. That's what this is. It's just a generic. We could have used the possum, but... Well, the problem was uh, we forgot to bring the possum, to be perfectly well, okay. honest with you. <laughs> tell all of our secrets. As we always are, are yeah. Okay. All right, I've made a dubbing loop. Now I'm going to throw my tying thread around that material we just dubbed in there, and I'm going to take it to the front, up to the thorax area. I'm going to just put a quick half hitch in it. I'm going to bring the bobbin holder around, and now I'm going to spin this into the dubbing loop. And I don't want it real tight because I want that material well, now, to be, oh, now yeah. what? I was going to say, yeah, you're going to spin it. I'm going to turn I it took around one, yeah, yeah, I took one wrap behind yeah. the ribbing material. Yeah. That works so well. And now I'm just going to come forward. And you can see how that yeah. builds just a real, in fact, you can get wrapped up in it and you go too far, run out of room. It going on the hook so nice. Now I'll take a couple of wraps, bind that down, clip it off. And now I'm going to reverse wrap this ribbing. You can definitely see that wrap in there a lot better than if I had gone the same direction and as the And by reverse dubbing. wrap, you just mean instead of wrapping over the top away from you, you're wrapping, wrapping over the top it towards, towards you. me. Right. To keep it from sinking down mm -hmm. the body. Mm -hmm. Nice. Looks good. Now, if you're going to cut this, sometimes you can break it and get away with it. Sometimes it won't. Well, there it did. Now for the, the legs, I'm going to take the grouse. And I'm going to take a clump of the grouse, and I'm going to put a set of legs on either side. Now, there will be numerous ways you could do this. You could tie it on like I'm doing here to either side, and that's a little bit long. All i got to do is pull it back through toward me. You know, one well, comment we probably pulled, should make about the grouse is if, if, a, if you read the pattern, the pattern calls for partridge. partridge. And uh, partridge means a different thing to a western tire than it does to an eastern tire. Yeah, because I laid the partridge out. Yeah, well, that's what it called for. But the thing I happened to realize, I used to live in the, in the east, in New England, they refer to the rough grouse as partridge. Oh, really? Okay. And well. in, the e in the west, you talk about partridge, you're talking about Hungarian partridge. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the Hungarian partridge feathers are gray. Speckled gray. I think it would work. Well, it would, except that this is basically a brown fly, yeah. brown tail and yeah. brown everything. Which that would and, be gray. Uh, it just didn't make sense to me to put partridge on there until I realized uh, that in the east, when they say partridge, they mean grouse. Uh -huh. So if you're a western tire, uh, it would be confusing. So uh, I think uh, grouse is safe to say grouse. We're talking okay. about rough grouse. Yeah. Or if you're in the east, uh, the pats, the partridge. Now I'm going to take another piece of this mottled uh, brown feather, and I'm going to tie it in with the shiny side or the good side down. And what that happens in when I fold it over, then it will make, it will show the right side being up. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. All right. Now I'm going to dub a darker thorax. This is a feathered fairly dark brown and I want this to be a little bulkier than the body material was so I'm not going to form a dubbing loop with this one I'm just going to wrap it on I think that might be enough I'm just going to come toward the rear slightly back toward those legs just to make sure everything is filled in right I think it's interesting too that uh, to show, remind people that you put the legs on before the thorax yes a lot of people try to put those legs on in front of the thorax, oh, and then it makes room. a mess with the head. Yes, you wouldn't have room to do yeah. it. Then I'll just grab this wing case, fold it over. And then clip it off. There's the leg sticking out either side. That's a good looking nymph. 
Oh, and, and you know, I think that would even work in lakes. Th those little legs would just kick. I, I mean, I know it's not designed for a lake. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's a good all-around tan mm -hmm. nymph. Yeah, it is. But I know Joe specifically uses it when the sulfur hatch is on. Oh, really? He said, when you're out here and the sulfur hatch is on, just that they're starting to hatch. You don't want to be without this nymph. Yeah. Uh, and even during a hatch, a regular hatch, because a lot of the sulfurs, they don't come off in clouds; they trickle off all day. Oh. And it's the, it's my favorite hatch in the world to fish. Okay. Because these little sulfur dries are just gorgeous. Really? They are like little. Mm -hmm. balls of fire in the sky and they trickle off all day long so you can fish them all day. Well there's a Humps uh, sulfur nymph. Oh that's good. It has the mottled brown tail, it has the light tan dubbing and r ribbed with the copper wire in this case. The legs are made out of grouse, the thorax is just a darker uh, brown dubbing, the wing case is the mottled brown feather. Now we're going to tie a fly that's originally, uh, we got the pattern, it's call, it was called a uh, panfish fly, but I know it would be good for trout as well. It's called a baby leech, and it's uh, obviously a wet fly, but mm, tied on a, a dry, dry fly, fly hook. hook, so you fish it up near the Must surface. Must be close to the surface. And it'll sink a little bit with the materials, oh, sure but it's will. not apparently not a deep fly, but you could make it weighted sure or could. put a bead head on it and sure go deep could. too. Pretty simple fly, very, very few material. We're going to use a 6 aught black tying thread this time because the body will be tied totally with that black thread. Then we'll use a hackle out of black rabbit and it'll have a rib of the copper wire. Now here you could also use gold wire but we'll use copper again tonight. Now I have a standard dry fly hook. This is a size 10. Uh, I think it said you could tie them all the way down to a 14. And probably bigger up to a could 8. Be. There's just more, I yeah. pinched the barb on the fly. Take this tying thread and I'm just going to dress that whole hook shank. Now uh, you see I'm holding that thread up at a 45 degree angle. That keeps every wrap falling directly on top of the other. There is no gap then in it. I do that all the time and it's, it's really oh, a help it works to me. so nice. And the angle doesn't matter, 50, no. 45 or no. 60 or even 61 and a half. <laughs> now I'm going to come to the front then back to the rear again, and then I'm going to bend that wire forward, and I'm going to take just a few wraps behind that ribbing. That's so nice because it, it keeps the ribbing coming out yes. of the body, not out Instead of the tail. Instead of out of the back of and it. And it looks more realistic. Then I'm going to run this thread forward, keeping it as close together as I can. And that forms the whole head, or the whole body assembly. Now, I don't want to get up here too close because I've got quite a bit of other material to put on. Now I'm going to run this ribbing to the front and if I were tying these at home what I would do is to put this ribbing on, take the hook out of the vise, coat that uh, body and ribbing material with the head cement and then and let it dry. Set it aside to dry. Sure. Yeah. And then put it aside and then put the uh, the the hackle on it. Well, don't do it now, or you'll have no, hackles I'll stuck have in hackle every day. <laughs> but no, I do that too. Now, what I'm going to do is just make a little loop here, hold it open with my finger, tie that down. What that does, it totally closes that loop off. Then we're going to put a a dubbing loop tool in it. And incidentally, that's a homemade tool you made yourself out it of a is. pin vise and it's piano wire. It's out of wire. a pin vise and piano wire. Now I'm going to take just a very little bit of this rabbit dubbing. Now this is, I mean rabbit hair, it's still on the skin. And I'm going to go ahead and just slide it in that dubbing loop. And I want it to come out to be about as long as the tail. Now I don't care if it's going to go longer than that. I don't care at all. Now well, I'm going the to idea, you don't stick it equally through. You no. just, uh, uh, now I'm going to clip that hair, the, uh, not the hair, the skin off. Then I'm oh, just going to, see I've neat. left the yeah. skin on to get all that in there and that try to get neat. it put together as close as I can. I've never had enough sense to do that. I always try to stick it huh. in there loose. Well, mother of invention. I've yeah. learned the hard way with it. Now I'm just going to spin this all together. Just make a nice little tight loop. And you can see what that hair is doing. It's just standing out like any hackle would. 
I'm going to take my hackle pliers, and I have rather a large pair here because of the weight. Then I'm going to clip off that dubbing loop tool. Now what I'm going to do is just start wrapping. And I, you can see I've left quite a little bit of room there because I want some mm -hmm. material to go on there. And I'm going to pull that hair to the rear. I'm going to pull it to the rear every time I go around. Yep. Now you can put as much or as little hair on there as you like, hackle if you would call it that. The problem that you really want to watch is you don't want to get too much of it in there because then it works against itself. Mm -hmm. The sparser you can keep it, sometimes the more that hair will work. Uh, I know that fly would work. I know that fly would work in lakes. I know oh, that yeah. fly would work in streams. Uh, it has all the characteristics of an excellent and fly. And you know, to use it uh, for panfish, you could tie it in other colors like oh, yellow and white. Could. Sure. It'd make a good crappie sure. fly. Oh. I think it'd be a great crappie fly in yellow and white. Now I've built just a very small little head on there. Clip it off. Oh, I'll bet that would make in, oh, yeah. in, yeah. In fact, you could tie the body red, you could tie the hackle white, yeah. any number of, of colors. Of course, it'd be a misnomer to call it a leech, but that's all well, right. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Now I'll get a little bit of this head cement. And put now, on tell there. me about this head cement. Now this is really a, well, a fingernail hardener, isn't it? It is a fingernail hardener. What I have done is taken the brush and uh, cut it off shorter than it normally would be. And then I just take my thumb and finger and pull it out flat mm -hmm. and then just trim it till it comes to a point. Now, it makes a lot of sense. I've had people tell me about it and I thought, well, I don't want to use that big old brush. Well, and this that makes, makes it a great. lot smaller. Yeah. I mean, if you don't want to do that or yeah. use the brush, you could always dip a bodkin in it, just yeah. get the needle in it. Well, another little hint that works well for me is if I'm using a dubbing needle and get a drop of cement on, in order to keep from running the stuff into the eye mm -hmm. and filling the eye, if you've got a rotary vise, turn it upside down. Oh. Then you can put the and drop put of head cement in there. It all runs it away run from down. the eye. Sure, I'll bet that's and true. And you don't fill it up. I'll so I do that would. all the time. I bet it would. On any fly, dry flies or whatever. Well, uh, well there's yeah. a baby leech. Now, looking at this, I've put probably one wrap too much hackle on there. I can't hardly see the body or the rib in there, but yet when you're fishing that fly and that hair's working, mm -hmm. I think you could still see it all right. And the well, next I, one I would tie would be less. How you would fish this fly would depend a little bit on whether you're fishing for panfish yes. or, or trout. Yes. Uh, panfish, like it's slow. Mm -hmm. And you like to cast out there and with a floating line. With a floating line, yes. let it sink just under the surface mm -hmm. on this unweighted hook, and then just slowly bring mm -hmm. this. Bluegills and things, mm -hmm. you, you can't go too slow. Oh, no. And let the fibers move and strip it a little bit and let the fibers move. But you know, if I was going to fish this for trout, I might also put that on a sink tip or a full sinking well, line. Well, I might even put a bead head on it. Uh, well, to well get I might it deep. put a bead head. And sure. of course, if you're fishing crappies with a different mm -hmm. color or whatever, you'd well, want to fish it deeper with a little strip. There's the baby leech. Yeah. It's tied with nothing more than, than black thread ribbed with copper wire, and it has rabbit hair for the hackle. Yep, good looking fly. It is a good looking fly. Well, today we've tied, started out with your exciter. Mm -hmm. We've tied the humps, hump sulfur, sulfur nymph, yep. for the eastern fishermen especially, and now we've tied this panfish trout baby leech. Yes. I think that's a pretty good variety. It is and a good start. Uh, so we hope you'll have a good week of tying flies and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Dave and Leroy have produced two 100 minute videos covering basic trout fly selection and tying for the Western and Eastern United States. For basic Western and Eastern flies videos, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit our website at publictelevision.org. Cost of each video is $16.95 or get both for just $31.95 plus shipping and handling. You can also order the programs from this series. Each videotape includes three programs for just $22.95 plus shipping and handling. To order, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit us at our website, publictelevision.org.
For more information on this series, please visit our website, publictelevision.org.